title of my message today is this. There's been a change of plans. There's been a change of plans. Let me ask you, who among you here are natural planners? Raise your hand. All right, some. Okay, good, good. All right. If you had your Christmas gift shopping done by August of this year, that officially, officially makes you a great planner, okay? So, sino nakagawa nun? Meron ba? Meron yung iba, okay? I'm not done yet, really, um, with my gift shopping. But I could say that I'm a planner. My wife knows this, my family knows this, my team knows this, that I plan ahead. I plan my schedules, my talks, my different commitments, because my life is crazy, okay? I, I, I lead a feast, I'm finishing up my master's, I have different involvements in the Truly Rich Club, in my past job, and as a consultant, and all of that. So I need to plan, okay? If not, everything is for me, is gonna crumble. So let me give you an example. Let me give you a snapshot of my calendar last November. Pakita lang natin, ayan. Let's show them, ayan. Ang kulay, ano? <laughs> so yes, I am a planner and... That was my schedule then, busy life, and happy for God. But we also know this, all right? We, we, we also plan, even in our own organizations, in our own companies, I'm sure you have what you call planning sessions, yes? Right, that when you somehow come together and then you set targets, you set goals for the next year, and you try to somehow strategize on how to be able to reach and fulfill those targets. For us, for Ve and I, during this Christmas season, after Christmas, shortly after Christmas, before the new year comes, we go through what we call our personal planning. And maybe you do that as well. When you look back at the year and you look forward to the year ahead. And that's where we begin to somehow set our goals and our dreams for 2018. And this is also the time where I get to plan for our feast, where I get to just pray and discern the vision and the direction that God wants us to take. And I somehow also discern and pray the programs and the systems to be able to fulfill that vision. And so I believe, my friends, I included, and all of you as well, we are all to, certain ex an ex to a certain extent, we are all planners. Yes? But we all know that no matter how much we plan, there are still unexpected things that can come into our lives that may somehow change or alter our plans. Yes? And so sometimes we just end up saying, or we end up hearing, there's been a change of plans. Okay? And we see this even in the Christmas story. You see, Joseph and Mary, or some people would call him Joseph. Joseph, okay? What are you doing here, Joseph? Pick the pit up, Joseph. If you know what I'm talking about, okay? In this story, in our Christmas story, Joseph and Mary had a plan. And yet, somewhere along the way, God tells them, wait a minute. There's going to be a change in plans. And we read about this in Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. Are you with me? All right, can we read it all together? Can we have it on screen? One, two, three, go. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Let me just say that last line again. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. So just imagine this with me. Read between the lines because the text may not say it, but the context will. If you put yourself in the shoes of these two lovebirds who just recently got engaged, you're probably, or they're probably planning their wedding already, yes? It said in the passage that they're planning to get married, they're engaged. So think about it in, in modern context, in modern times. Probably they were thinking already of booking this venue for their wedding. Uh, iniisip siguro nila, oh, ito yung caterer natin. And they're already fixing the guest list. All right? And just like any engaged couple, apart from planning their wedding, 
they were already planning, I guess, their life together. They were probably thinking, okay, we're not going to have sex before marriage. We're going to build this house, live here, and have kids. So they had all these plans, and they were excited for what was ahead for Mary and Joseph. And yet suddenly, in the book of Luke, are you following me? Yes? In the book of Luke, Mary encounters God through an angel who tells her, you have been chosen. You have been chosen by God to be part of salvation history. And you will conceive a son through the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, Mary, growing up, even, and up to this point, she loved God. Mary was dedicated to God. Mary was devoted to serving God. And so in obedience, hearing this angel speak in behalf of God, what does she say? She says, yes. She says, let it be done to me according to your word. So Mary says yes. So now she knows she's going to get pregnant. And now she comes to Joseph. Now, let's be real here because these are real people with real emotions. She comes to Joseph and says, I'm pregnant. Let's get a vote here, okay? Who among you think that Joseph reacted excited? Raise your hand. Oh, we're going to get pregnant. Yes. Usually as a guy, okay, and I'll ask you this, okay, who among you think that when he, he heard this news, he was freaking out. Raise your hand. All right, some of you don't really just care, no? <laughs> okay? He was probably freaking out. What? Paano ka na, paano ka na buntis? Anong pregnant, pregnant? Sinong lalaki na ka, ano sa'yo, upakan ko? Diba? Parang he, in his mind, how was this possible? We didn't even, yet. And yet, she's pregnant. Ito yung sinasabi nila sa, sa Pilipino, sa Filipino na, yung bago pa sila ikinasal, may nauna na. May laman na, right? And probably this news to Joseph was so upsetting, was so devastating for him. Suddenly, all their plans in their minds came crashing down. And Joseph probably was thinking, Paano na yung non-refundable deposit namin sa simbahan kung sa kami ikakasal? Paano na yung invitations na padala na namin? What will I tell my parents? Oh gosh, what will I even tell Mary's parents? Because in his mind, he was probably so hurt because he was thinking that Mary actually cheated on him because of getting pregnant. And so suddenly, with all their dreams and plans come crashing down and with this pregnancy as a reality, he probably utters to God and says, God, this wasn't what I had planned. This wasn't what I had planned. And this is what happens next in verse 19. Can we have it on screen and let's read it together? One, two, three, go. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. Now, do you see something weird there? Right? Let me just clarify this because maybe if you didn't see it, let me tell you. They just got engaged. And yet, why do why is it now that Joseph is going towards divorce? Yes? So, what's happening here? You see, in this, in their culture, in their time, to break off an engagement, you have to go through a divorce. That's the only way that you can clear that up. So imagine. These two, this, this couple, from being engaged to planning to get married, now they're going to go through a divorce. The plan really changed for them. And think about this. We, we talked about the context of Joseph. Think about it now in the context of Mary. Because she said yes to God. Lord, I said yes to you, and, but why does it seem now that my life is falling apart? Why does it seem now that my life is over? And why do I say that? Because remember, she was a pregnant woman without a husband. She's going to get divorced. 
She's going to be a single mom trying to raise up this kid. So she probably wouldn't be able to get a good enough job to be able to provide for this kid. And she probably fears of ending up just being in the sidewalks begging for his child. And she's also probably thinking, what will people think? This would be a scandal. What, what rumors will spread about me, about us? And so in the midst of all of that confusion, Mary was probably uttering to God, God, I, I, I said yes to you. I said yes to serve you. And yet, why is it that all of this is happening? This wasn't what I had planned. This wasn't what I had planned. Now, friends, this is exactly how some of you feel right now because for some of you you're facing something in your life right now that you did not plan that when you planned out 2017 you didn't think that the problem or trial that you're faced with right now would actually happen but here it is change of plan because I'm sure none of us, when we stepped into 2017, none of us planned to go through financial difficulty. Yes? Are you with me? Yes? Right? When we stepped into 2017, none of us planned on having marital or marriage problems. None of us planned on um, going through medical battles or sickness in the family. None of us planned to face unemployment or career troubles or work troubles. None of us plan to get broken up this year. Meron ba? May nagplano ba? Di ba? Yung iba natatawa, oh, libre na ako ngayon. Yes, ganyan. Some of you may have, but some of us, we didn't plan on that. Some of us didn't plan all the trials and the problems that we face today. And yet, at the very end of the year, that's what we're going through. And maybe in the midst of pain and suffering, you're telling God, Lord, this is not what I signed up for. This is not what I had in mind. This wasn't what I had planned for this year. Who among you somehow feel that way? Raise your hand. All right, good. So this wasn't what I had planned. This wasn't what we had planned. That what we're facing now was completely unexpected. That when we came in in January, we didn't think that we would be where we are today. Faced with the trials and the troubles that we have. But if that's you, if that's you today, if you raise your hand saying that, Lord, this is not what I have planned and that's how you feel. I want to share with you this truth. Are you listening? I want to share with you this truth that I want to encourage you to embrace because I had to wrestle with this truth as well and embrace it. And this is for those who experienced a change of plans this year. And so if you're writing down notes, I want you to write this down. But more importantly, I want you to plant this deep into your heart. Are you ready? It's this. You don't have to understand the plan to trust that God has a purpose. You don't have to understand the plan to understand. You don't have to understand the plan to trust that God has a purpose. Amen? Amen. Just think about that. Proverbs 19.21, it says, Many are the plans in a person's heart, but the Lord's purpose, it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. So it seems like Mary... The plans of Mary and Joseph were wrecked, were shattered, were completely changed. And in all of that, suddenly Joseph tries again to make his own plans. Ay, ako bahala dito. She's pregnant. Okay, I'm gonna move towards divorce. But yet again, God stops him and says, I have something better in mind. There's gonna be a change of plans again. And we read about this in verses 20 to 21. I'll read it to you now. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. 
Because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. And here in verse 21, it shows God's purpose. And it says this, because she will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Oh, come on. That deserves some praise and clap to our great God. So you can imagine Joseph, after hearing this angel, he was probably saying, you mean God is in on this as well? You mean kasabot mo si Lord and all of this, itong pregnancy, itong angel na pumunta kay Mary and all of that? You mean there's a purpose in the midst of all my pain? And you can somehow, this is not written in the text, but if you just imagine with me, you can somehow hear God whispering to Joseph saying, my ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are different from your thoughts. And though you may not see it, though you may not feel it, I am working in all things to bring about the utmost good for those who love me and those who are called according to my purpose. You see, friends, sometimes God may even redirect our plans when he has a different purpose. And for Mary and Joseph, the change of plans in their lives led to the fulfillment of God's ultimate purpose, and that was the birth of his son Jesus for the salvation of the world. Amen? Amen? That change of plans brought about our salvation. See, Mary and Joseph had a plan. But God had a purpose. And His purpose, believe it or not, was you. You see, everybody says this in Christmas, that Jesus is the reason for the season. Jesus is the reason for the season. Jesus is the reason for the season. But you know what I think? If you ask God what the reason for the season was and is, He will say the reason for the season is you. The reason that Jesus came into this world was for you. Remember, for God so loved the world, for God so loved you, for God so loved me that He gave His only beloved Son that whoever believes in Him will not perish but shall have have eternal life. The reason for the Christmas season, my friends, was for you. It was for you. It was for us. And so even in the midst of trial, even if in the midst of the problems that we face in life today, if it was true for Mary and Joseph then, it will continue to be true for us today that we don't have to understand the plan to trust that God has a powerful, mighty purpose for our lives. Amen? Now, if I may share with you, there was also a change of plans in my year this year. Let me ask you, who among you experienced a change of plans this 2017? Nag-iba, nag-nagbago yung buhay, nag-iba yung plano, okay? I went through something similar this year. Last year, 2016, I was happy and blessed to be leading two feasts. Feast ATC and Feast Festival Mall Alabang. I was just glad to be serving, to be leading those two feasts. Come October of last year, ATC Cinema Management informs me that they will be renovating their cinemas to make it smaller. And so that means we wouldn't fit anymore. And this led me now to scout a venue for us. But to no avail. We weren't able to find one. And so now, at that time, I was faced with the reality that we may not have a home come 2017. November came. And it was decided upon by Brother Arun, our district builder, us builders along with other district leaders, we decided that we had to close down our center and Festival Mall Alabang where Festival Feast Alabang was being held because we had to cut down huge costs. 
And I was told that Feast ATC and Feast Festival Mall Alabang will be merged together to become Feast Bellevue PM. And so suddenly, there was a change in plans. There were a lot of changes actually. Because of the change in venue, because of the change of time, the change in people, the change in leaders, the change in culture, even the change in size. Because all these changes, sadly, some people left. And they left for different reasons. And because of their leaving, it just, I got hurt so much. Because I felt that I was abandoned. And I carried this pain, this change of plans all throughout the year. Parang ilang beses ko to iniyak. I can ask my wife. And I was thinking, parang akong binraykan ilang beses. And I was asking God, why? Why did this all have to change? This wasn't what I had planned. Why did things have to change? And then I was faced with this truth. And God was telling me so clearly, Mike, you don't have to understand the plan for you to trust me that I have a purpose. And so I'll be honest with you, all throughout this year, I couldn't seem to understand the plan. I had no idea the direction that God wanted us to take. But yet in all of that, in the pain, in the confusion, I tried to hold on to Him. I tried to trust that He had a purpose. But I couldn't see it. I couldn't see it. And it's only now at the end of the year as I was preparing for this message that suddenly by the grace of God, I began to see His purpose. His purpose in all of these changes. His purpose in our merger. And it was this. God's purpose in our merger, God's purpose in the change of plans was you. That when He changed the plans, He had you in mind. It's you. It was for you. It was for each and every one of you. In other words, because of the change of plans, you're here. Because of the change of plans, Feast Bellevue PM is here to be a home for you so that you could encounter heaven here on earth every Sunday. It was for you. Because of the change of plans, our feast is now a home to so many people. Because imagine, if the, ch- if the plans weren't changed, we wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be here at the end of the year. So because of the change of plans, our feast has become a home to so many people. Because of the change of plans, our feast has become a, a home for those who have fallen but now have risen to be stronger. Because of the change of plans, our feast is now a home to families who have battled sickness or continue to battle sickness. Because of the change of plans, our feast is now a home to single mothers trying to raise their kids to be like Jesus. Because of the change of plans, our feast has become a home to those who are mourning, to those who have experienced death this past year. Because of the change of plans, our feast is now a home to those who have been broken-hearted. I love you, Sams. 
Because of the change of plans, our feast is now a home to those who have gone through addiction in life and is now being healed and being brought closer to Jesus. Because of the change of plans, our feast is now a home to Balikbayans who are starting a new life again back home here in the Philippines. Because of the change of plans, our feast is now a home to those who are starting a new life together. Because of the change of plans, we are home to growing marriages. Because of the change of plans, our feast has become a home to whose families are growing and have new members. Because of the change of plans, our feast has become a home to people who committed to never stop serving God and giving the best that they could each and every week, our leaders and our servants here. And because of the change of plans, our feast is even a home to struggling leaders who are trying their best to follow God's call for their lives. So friends, many things have changed. And we have gone a long way this year. But because of the change of plans, our feast is a home to so many people whose lives are being changed by the love, the mercy, and the grace of God. And drama, no? So in your life and mine, Things may not have gone according to plan. And maybe like me, you felt the pain, you felt the frustration throughout the year. But I'm glad, my friends, I'm glad at the very end of the year because I know this truth. I'm glad that now and then God interrupts our plans to bring about His great purpose for our lives. I'm glad that He does change us the plans for the better. And so if if you experience a change in plans this year and still right now you feel devastated, you feel down and depressed by it, let me just tell you this. Because of God's sovereignty, His goodness and His love for you, trust me, you don't have to fully understand the plan to trust that God has a wonderful, beautiful, and powerful purpose for your life. And so friends, in the midst of changing plans, the question now, and I'll end with this, the question now is, in the midst of changing plans, how do we trust in God's purpose. And I'll give you one tip on trust today. Just one tip on trust. And it is this. It's gratitude. Everybody say gratitude. You see, I believe a powerful tool that will help us trust in God's purpose is gratitude. Because being thankful to God, when we're thankful to God, it strengthens our trust in Him. In fact, one of the greatest expressions of trust is when you can be grateful to God even if things don't go according to plan. 
That even if things don't go your way, even if things did not turn out the way you want it to be, that you can thank God, that you can say, Lord, in spite of the change in plans, I know you are molding me according to your purpose. Lord, in spite of the change of plans, I know you are using me for the purpose of helping someone who probably is going through the same thing. Lord, I know that in spite of the change of plans, you are preparing me for the far greater purpose you have ahead of me in my life. For I know you are in control. For I know you are faithful. So the question is today, my friends, is this. And I'll leave you with this. Will you still be thankful to God even if things didn't go as planned this year? Come on, I can't hear you. Yes or no? Because friends, one sign one sign that you're maturing in your faith, one sign that you're maturing in your trust to God is that you can thank Him, that you can thank God even in the midst of trials. Yes? And so let's look back at 2017 together. Let's re recall God's faithfulness that whether if, whether, if not, or whether or not things went according to plan or maybe along the way, there was a change in plans. I encourage you. Let's be grateful. Let's thank God. Because after all, after all that has happened this year, after all that has transpired, after all that has happened, God's loving purpose will still prevail. God's loving purpose will still prevail. 2,000 years ago, these two had plans to get married, to get engaged, and suddenly God stepped in, changed their plans, and that change in plans brought about our Savior who born and was died, died on the cross to save us and redeem us from our sins. God's loving purpose will still prevail.